Before we learn how to create and modify our reports, I think it's a good idea to introduce you to reports to see the different views that are available. And so here's my report, the overall report, and it's got to be based upon a table either directly or indirectly through a query, and it's actually based upon the inventory query, which is based upon, well, what table or tables? To find out, let's right click on it, go to the design view, and it's these four tables right here the manufacturers, computers, employees, and departments. So let's close out and take a look at the report. Double click. And by default, when you open up a report, it opens up in the report view, as opposed to three other views that I'll go over in just a minute. So what you're looking at here is the title of my report, Department Inventory, and today's date. And then down below, I have a list of all the employees, the computers that are assigned to each employee, and their group by department. So in this department, Department Code 100, Human Resources, I have a total of one, two, three employees and their corresponding computers that they're assigned to. The barcode, asset tag, manufacturer, date received, purchase price, and amortized. And we can go down to the next one, Department 200, couple employees, and go all the way down till I see the entire report. And there we go. And so that's the report view. Now, if I want to print this report off, and I'm curious to find out how many pages there are in printable form, well, the best thing to do is to go to the print preview, which is the second view that I want to cover right now. And to do that, you can just go ahead and find a blank area and right click. So you can switch views because if you right click on one of these fields, well, let me try a field here. There you go. You can actually see other options there, like when it comes to filtering, but we won't do that. Let's go ahead and find a blank area and right click. And let's go to the print preview. Now, what you see here is what's going to come out of your printer. So, let's go ahead and take a look at it, and we've got the scroll bar here, but notice that when I hover over the page, I get this little magnifying glass. Then when I click on it, it zooms out so I can get the overall layout view of it, and you can see I've got a lot of white space over here, and so I may want to tweak my margins and so on, and we'll learn how to do that in a later training video. But when I click on it, it zooms in, click on it, it zooms out, click on it, zoom in. Let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom, and there we go, we're on page one of three. So to go to the next page, I can go ahead and click on the page navigation bar. Next page, next page, we're at the end. You can also come in here and just delete the page number and type in one and hit enter and it takes you right to page one. And so like the other record navigation bars, you can go, well in this case, page by page or to the last page or to the first page or just like I did, type it in here. And one thing that I wanna cover, let's go ahead and go to the second page. And at the bottom of the second page, take a look at George Bond. Now, he's got a computer that's assigned to him, but I can't see it at the bottom of page two. If I want to get the asset tag for George Bond, I have to go to the next page and scroll to the top. And there's the, well, it looks like the asset tag, 2009. It's not really a barcode, but in any case, I make up numbers here for my examples. And then the name of the, what is that? Is it the name of the manufacturer? You see, the problem that I'm running into is that when I'm looking at it right now, or I print it off, that's how it's going to come out. So when I'm later looking at this, I'm like, I got to go back down to the bottom of page two to find out the label for that column is, oh, that's the manufacturer. In a later training video, I'll show you how you can clean this up so you can keep these together so they don't break across the page. So you're doing what we're doing now where we're like, okay, let me go back to the bottom of this page, then to the top of the next, back to the bottom of this. Oh, that's annoying. And then while we're in the print preview, up at the top you've got its related contextual print preview tab. So you can go ahead and just print it. Set your margins. Go ahead and choose the page layout, the page setup. Also, if you want to see it two pages or more pages, and we'll cover a lot of this in a later training video. And then to close out of here, well, you can go ahead and right click and switch your views or just click on close print preview. And it goes back to the default report view. And when I right click on the tab, there you go, report view, print preview, what you see is what's going to come out of your printer. And then you got the other two, the layout view, which we talked about in earlier training videos. Well, for our forms, at least, when you select it, it allows us to go ahead and choose a field or hover over a field. And you can see when I get on the border of this field, how I get arrows pointing up and down. I can click and drag to resize that. Or if I click on another field, and it selects that, and I've got the four-way arrow. 
I can actually click and drag that and move it over there, but then the label's not there, so I'd have to click and drag that field and move it over there and switch the labels around. And The layout view can be handy, but in this case, it's not for me. My favorite view is the design view because I got more flexibility and it's easier, especially with something that's a bit more tricky like this. So let me go ahead and hit undo a couple or several times. And then speaking of the design view, let's right click and go to the design. And the design view looks just like the design view for our forms in that you get a grid, rows and columns of dots and lines to help you line it up. But here in the design view, take a look at the bars here. First off, you got the report header. What comes down below that bar? is going to be in the report header or up at the top the first page that's heading the report hence report header then down below you can have something at the top of each page or the page heading page header and I don't have anything at the top of each page so there's nothing there I could create a little text box that has the name of the report that they're looking at at the top of every page and then down below that you have the department code header so I've got all the labels, so it's grouping my report by departments. And then underneath that, I actually have them grouped by employees because maybe I have some employees that might have more than one computer. Because if I have an employee that has more than one computer, I want to be able to keep that all grouped under the employee. And then below that, I have the details. So we've got the labels and then the data that gets pulled in. So this will pull in the barcode for each employee and it's got the label up above so I know what I'm looking at down below in the report view or the print preview and then the manufacturer label with its corresponding text box or data field and the rest here and then at the bottom of each page in the footing of each page the page footer you got a code here that will pull in the page page well if you have five pages it'll be page one of five page two of five so that way when I print it off it lets me know that if somebody hands me three pages and it says I got page three of five, then I'm like, okay, where's page four of five, page five of five? It's a good indicator that I'm missing something. And then you have the report footer. There's nothing there, but that just means it comes at the end of the report at the bottom, the last page. So if I have five pages at the very bottom of that fifth page and the footing of that page at the end, whatever you want to add there. And we'll go over that more in detail in later training videos, but here's an introduction of the four different views when it comes to looking and working with your reports. Oh, and as a selling point for my Excel training videos, you see up here this little coding, it's called the now function. If you learn functions in my Excel training videos, you can actually put those and use those in the report. And what the now function does is it pulls in today's date, meaning now. So a lot of the things that you learn in my Excel training videos can be very helpful when it comes to learning access. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for all my training, please visit me at my website, dreamforce.us.